Okay, so it's three o'clock and we'll get going. So today I am excited to share with you um, one of the uh, things that I pre-ordered from the fall or the July through December mini catalog. Um, and I ordered the uh, um, the painted um, painted Christmas sweet or bundle. And one of them is this beautiful um, set of cardstock. I mean, of signer series paper. I have to give you more information. Because although I've been working on with the paper, I didn't remember the exact name. It's Painted Christmas. Very simple. Painted Christmas. I love painted anything. And these are some of the design designs of it. So this one is my favorite with the pine cones and the greenery. And the back side has the, kind of the reverse coloring with the green in the background with the white things. So that's one. I like this one too, with the berries along with the evergreen. And the back side of that are Christmas bells, jingle bells. And this piece is um, nice, kind of combined. It almost looks like summer because it's got regular leafed things and the evergreens. So that could be used any time of the year. And then this is just a nice, beautiful, leafy background. Again, you can use it any time of the year. And here's another one useful for all year round. Uh, very ferny in the greens. And then you have berries. I would say they're holly berries. The leaves to me don't look like they're holly leaves, but maybe there is a variety of leaf of holly that does have a leaf like that. I'm not sure about that. So this is the back side of one. What do you think the other side is? Pine cones. Uh, uh, against a back, like a bark, be, um, a beach bark background. Then we have some more of the berries and leaves. And a really lovely um, mint macaron background that, or no, soft sea foam. And this has berries and evergreen and, and um, traditional holly leaves on it. So I wanted to make a card that would display all of the patterns of this. And I came close. It's kind of a new a kind of a in thing right now to be making pinwheel tower cards. And so when you open the card lays flat to mail it, when you open it up, you get this pinwheel effect. And you can flip it around. So this one was what I thought would be the first page. So there's two of the designs and then you flip it. And here's another two designs. Flip it again, and there's another two, and then one more. Let's celebrate. So did I leave a place for, on this one, I didn't leave a place to sign it. Interesting. I guess I might have to sign it over here. Maybe put another label on so there's a place to write so you can see. Or I could just put a piece of white cardstock there and do the writing on it. Anyway, I love this design. It's easy to make. Um, and it folds fairly flat. So I'm gonna make this one. Well, before I do that one, you can make it in a variety of different sizes. This one is a five by seven card. I made it for my daughter's birthday. And I have, I don't know why I didn't order the, um, impressions in ink um, designer series paper when it first came out but I thought maybe I already had enough flowers anyway I finally ordered it and I absolutely love it so this is the one page of her card and there's another one 
Yeah, I love that gold foiling in there. This is where I will write her greeting. And then here's another one. And when it stands up, the inside is the like this. So that's the five by seven size. Then I also made one that is a slim line. This makes into nine by four and it fits into a, a, um, a number 10 business envelope. At least I hope it is, does. And this is showing again, I wanted to use the red patterns in the um, painted Christmas uh, designer series paper. So there's that one. And I used, uh, did some of the stamps from the uh, painted, no, the Christmas season stamp set. This Christmas season stamp set. And then I also got as part of the suite, the Christmas to remember because I love some of these greetings. And I glitzed it up with a little bit of red um, rhinestones. And the inside of this one is the that uh, bell type one. And it, I use, you use the designer series paper for the inside for the tower instead of using um, cardstock so that it's not quite so thick. And then, I, all these dimensions I got from watching a, a video that Linda Heller did. And she did a great job on explaining how to make the different sizes. This one is a gift, um, a um, note card size. And she had made one that was a gift card holder. And I think that that worked out really well. So that's that. Here's the gift card thing. I had some eighth inch double-sided sticky tape that I used because if I'd have used our tearing tape, the card wouldn't have gone into there. And that. Wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you. So, I, to say the least, I am addicted to these. We're going to make this one, which is the A2 card that fits. This is the four and a quarter by five size. Ooh, it's a little larger than five. It's five and a half hmm. by four and a quarter. Oh, I missed, missed, missed a little bit on my measurements. So I may have to make put it in a bigger envelope. Anyway. Let's get started on it. I used for the card the Peaceful Deer stamp set, and it comes in a bundle with the Peaceful Deer punch, which will punch out this one and this one. And then I used Stitch So Sweetly labels. For the, for the greetings. And the greetings came from that. Um, oh, actually, the greetings came from the Peaceful Deer. And then there's one that I wanted to decorate this side because I just wanted to have a, something on that one because the others were a little fancier patterns. And I used the seasonal labels dies. These labels are beautiful, people. Absolutely beautiful. I love, I love shaped labels. And this comes with two sets. Not only does it cut out the leaves and stuff from the stamp set, um, but it also has lots of labels. And it has 
the dies to cut slots in your labels. So I use this label and I will be using it to do this. Okay, so for the A2, which is five and, oh, five and a half, okay, I was okay, by four and a quarter, by four and a half, no, four and a quarter, can't read my writing. So the tower part is this piece of cardstock, our designer series paper, and I am going to put this on the inside, and the measurements for this are four and a half tall by four and a quarter wide. And so I want four and a quarter tall. Okay, get my trimmer. And you score, okay, so i got to make sure I've got the right direction going here. Four and a quarter. Okay, so this is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm sorry. So we score at one. Oops, get that cutter out of there. Score at one. Score again at two. At three. And again at four. And that should leave you a quarter of an inch tab here. And I want this pretty design to show on the inside because the outside of your cube or your tower is going to be totally covered with the other cardstock. I'm going to crease this to make it a little. Cheryl, it's good to see you. Thanks for watching. Oh, come on. Hi, Ruthie. Where are you from, Cheryl? Oh, come on, glue. comes just about the end of the thing for me for this one A 
like using the liquid glue because you can kind of adjust it if you don't get things lined up quite straight. Oh, come on. But what I don't like about it is it sticks to my hands exceedingly well. Okay, so there's our tower. And these pieces of cardstock, you have four of them, and they are four and a fourth tall by two and three fourths wide. And the designer series paper is just about half of that, an inch shorter because this is an inch across here. And when you put this on, an inch will be covered up. I'm gonna go back to using snail. Um, I mean s steel. Old habits stick around a long time. And then put the seal on here. And you put it on to the tower. Like that. And then on the other side, this is the four. Um, four inch by two and a half inch, no, by one and a half inch. Okay, then we'll do the next one. This one on. So on this one I wanted to show off all the patterns or as many of them as I could of this particular DSP. On the others I was more selective one here. I think I'll put... You kind of have to plan out your pattern so they complement each other.
doesn't really take a long time to make these cards. The base is really quite quick. The embellishing and stuff like that takes a little longer. And I think cutting the paper takes a bit of time, but you kind of get into a rhythm with it. Okay, so then we'll flip it one more time. Interesting. My favorite pattern I don't even have. Well, I guess I will. I'm going to use the light color here. So I would suggest, rather than what I did, I would suggest that you apply all the big pieces and the wings, or if you want to call it the wings, of your pinwheel. And then go back and add the smaller pieces. because I really wanted to have that forest, this one that's in the center, I really wanted to have that out. And as it is, I ended up, let's see. Okay, this will work. Okay, so this is the reverse side of this one. And that's what I started, that's what I ended up trying to do on my sample that I made. Okay. And the reverse side of this one is this. So that worked out pretty well. So there we've got our pinwheel. Now to embellish it. I did most of the stamping and die cutting to start with. To save time, I have sending love and peace this season Let's celebrate and wishing you a wonderful year and friendship and friendships dear. Now where's my sample card? Here it is. So this time I want to be sure I get things kind of lined up. Okay, I guess it doesn't really matter where I put them. is one I do one okay okay so this one I have I stamped the deers and fussy cut out these two because there is not a punch for them. Sending love and peace this season. And I cut these out in advance because I'm not very good at 
Plastic cutting is not something you need to watch me do. Unlike some people, they can talk and work at the same time, but most of the time I forget that I've got people watching and I get so absorbed in what I'm doing that you get long pieces of silence. So I did this before. So they would be ready. And I just love, I really love this sleeping deer. Okay, then move on to the next space. Okay. And on this one, I'm going to add a splash of ribbon and this. And this is the cherry cobbler and gold uh, ribbon and it is well how wide is it half inch what so I'm going to just make a little flag like with it One of the easiest ways I have found to attach ribbon behind is to put seal on the back of the label. I bought some stamp and seal plus and it actually is little segments kind of little tiny strips crosswise strips and I bought that thinking it might be easier to have to keep struggling to advance the glue or the adhesive but it's about the same as the snail as as the regular seal so put, let's celebrate there okay the last one is the this one and this is what I really intended to have on the outside but we will punt now this is the stamped deer and here's the punch it also punches out antlers so I turn it upside down until I get it lined up properly and just kind of gently squeeze the punch to hold it in place once you get it lined up and there's our deer and because this is a fairly thick Card anyway, I'm not using Stampin' Dimensionals because I don't like to have to pay extra postage. I got a heads up that the postage is going to go up to 58 cents a stamp for first class in August. So I hope my husband remembers to buy a couple packages while he's at Costco. And Merry Christmas. And there you have it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we duplicated a couple of them. We duplicated the pattern. 
but it's a great way on this one I have the one two three four five six so it showed all the patterns but I just got confused because I was talking with you and so excited anyway it's a quick it's a relatively quick card to make and uh, I plan to make a whole lot more so I thank you for watching I will have the directions these directions I'll have a link to them on my blog or actually I think I'll put it in my blog like I say I got the measurements from Linda Heller by uh, in her blog um, YouTube presentation and what it is is that you end up because you overlap so this all together is the width of your of your card so this is five and a half and the two kind of meet up in the center so half of that is two and three-fourths so that's how you figure out the card stock length of each piece because you're going to take it in half and you fold it when you fold it you can see here's the edge of one here and this is the edge of the other one and so when you fold it together it makes the whole five and a half so if you want that for five and a half if you want one that is this one is nine so each piece would be half of nine which would be four and a half and if you wanted a five by seven this one is so this is five by seven half of seven is uh, three and a half so that's how you get the size of the cards you have so if you wanted to make one oh let's say I would like to make one that fits into the smaller security envelopes so I would take the length of that mine is probably an eighth of an inch or maybe even a quarter of an inch shorter so that there's room for it to fit in a little bit of ease divide that in half and that's how wide you would make each of your cards and then for the height however high the envelope is that's how high you would make it taller you would make it so it's kind of a interesting easy way to figure out what size you need but I will have those measurements posted for you thank you for watching if you have any questions email me sue at soggystamper.com my blog is soggystamper.com and if you need any of these products um, or if you want me to send you a catalog of the upcoming fall or July through Jan uh, December um, mini catalog and the celebration starts August 3rd as well that means that when you order your Christmas supplies for every $50 that you order you will get a free uh, product um, stamp set or some paper one of the papers that I just got from that is because as a demonstrator you get to pre-order that might be something you would be interested in and if you are contact me anyway this darling penguin designer series paper it coordinates with the penguins that are going to be in the holiday fall catalog and then I also got the um, ones that coordinate with the the deer uh, and those were each for a $50 order if uh, there's a couple of uh, offerings for a hundred dollar order and uh, so anyway oh another thing in celebration I haven't used it yet this is the hundred dollar with the hundred dollar you can get the counting sheep darling stamp set and the dies so anyway celebrations coming up and if you want the catalogs be sure to contact me and this video will be up on my youtube channel uh, later today uh, so it's soggy stamper the soggy stamper thank you for watching and i uh, have you hope you come back next Friday afternoon three o'clock let's see what else I have for you 
Have a wonderful weekend and talk to you later. Bye-bye.